G'day, I'm Mark Hoth and welcome to Swift Almanac. In our last lesson, we saved our list of users to core data and linked the interface builder objects to real code through outlets and actions. In this lesson, we're going to implement a launch screen, auto login through user defaults and implement logout and alerts. So let's get started. Okay, so if you want to follow along, it's really simple. Go to source code, go to clone, type in the following URLs. If you want to clone login to, which will be our base application, and put that on your desktop. And if you're looking for what the final product will look like, get login three as well. Put that on your desktop. What user defaults are is basically a small configuration file that works off key value pairs um, that you can use to quickly save data to and from your application. It's persistent, so it gets saved to the iPhone, um, and it's different to core data. Core data is a backend SQL database, so you can do, even though we're not using it, um, the functionality as such. Um, you can have multiple tables, you can have relationships between those tables, and you can do complex searches. Um, essentially, user defaults is, is basically a giant dictionary where you can go, give me this value um, for, this key, for this key. So what we want to do is create a new file under our model, because it's data, and it's going to be a Swift file, and we're going to call it user defaults. We're going to save it into our model folder. We're going to import UI kit because we're going to use interface things a bit later. And now we're going to want to create a singleton class uh, for our defaults. So to create a singleton, Essentially, we're using this static shared um, property, uh, which is calling itself, and that will ensure that all uh, instances, or uh, every time we call our defaults, uh, there's only going to be a single, hence the name singleton, single instance uh, of this data available. And we're making this initialization or initializer private so that it can only be called by the um, class itself, even though it's going to have nothing in it. But that means that no one else can initialize, or nothing else can initialize this class. So we need two method functions. We need, uh, a, we need a load user defaults, and we need a save user defaults. And when we're saving, we're going to need to be able to get some parameters. So we need a username, which is a string, a password, which is a string, and our uh, auto login, which is a Boolean. And quite simply, what we want to do is we're going to set the self.username equal to the username that's been passed. So uh, in this reference here, self is referring to the class, and username here is referring to the parameter name that's been passed, and you can do that uh, if you've seen my uh, tutorial on functions and methods. Um, then we also want to do obviously the same with password, and also with auto login. So now that we've got those parameters and they're stored as part of our uh, defaults in memory, we need to write them to user defaults. 
quote. Simply, we just call user defaults dot standard. That's the standard user defaults, and then we set the value for this key. We do that for the username, the password, and the auto login. Um, it's a little bit confusing because of the values before the key, and we call them key value pairs. Um, but in any event, this is the value for this key, and then at the very end, we type dot synchronize, and that allows us to um, to save the actual. Uh, memory things and flush the cache and send it to the iPhone for persistence. For debugging purposes we will just put some print username password and auto login. So let's look at load user defaults. It's the reverse of save user defaults. What we do is uh, now we've set initializers here for nil strings, nil string and false for auto login. Um, however, the first time you run this application, um, it's uh, not going to have any defaults there, and so these values dot string are going to return optionals. Um, so we go user defaults dot standard, get the string for the key username, the same username as was down here, and we set uh, just as we did here, self dot username equals username. Um, we get the username from this now this will only be, call, be called if the username exists, and if it doesn't exist, then we're going to get the default value of empty. So we don't need to worry about the optionality or guard statements or having an else statement here. We've covered it by the default uh, settings for the parameters or the properties. Uh, we do the same for the password and for auto login boolean. By default will return false uh, so there's no optionality it'll either be true or false and if it is in the system it'll return the value there if it's not in the system then it will just return false and again we will have print statements and that allows us to save our user defaults and load our user defaults so where do we save them let's go to our login view controller down here we've got a little note saying write user defaults our defaults dot shared dot save user defaults and we pass the username the password and we will login switch dot is on and we will copy that and paste it down here where we also want to write the user defaults. And that will enable us to save the user defaults um, in both instances where they are needed. So now I just want to quickly do some tidying up. So we just go to our login view controller and then down here we've got the else login failed. Um, so rather than printing statement, we actually want to display something for our users. It says show an alert, and sending alerts is pretty straightforward. It's three lines of code, um, or it can be more, but anyway. Um, so you have let alert equals UI alert controller. We want to set the title to be login failed, and the message is your password is incorrect. Preferred style is dot alert. Um, and then we want to add an action that says OK, which basically is creating an OK button on our alert. Uh, and it's going to have the default action, which is simply uh, going to be uh, if you hit return, then you'll be hitting the OK button. And there's no handler, which basically means that uh, the, there's nothing special to do when you click OK. Uh, it will just close the window um, or the alert. And uh, then we will present the alert, it'll be animated, and there's no completion handler. So when we call present, what we're doing is we're displaying uh, another view on top of the existing view, and uh, that's presented what's called modally, and modally means that nothing outside can be touched, and um, the only area that is active is the view of this, um, of this alert. Uh, and that's pretty common if you're an old Mac developer like I was. Um, it was a modal dialog. And uh, if you've used other windowing systems, you understand that concept. So we'll just run that quickly to test it. 
Okay, so we can type in mark at gmail.com and test. And we can go, we'll say auto login, but go create or login. Now that should log us in, so that's fine. Login succeeded. These are our, actually our rights to um, user data and to user defaults. And if I get the password incorrect and click on this button, then we should get an alert. And clicking outside of the window does not work because it's modally presented. And we've got one button, button that says OK. And we can click on that and we're back to our screen. Just dismisses the alert automatically. So now we've got login working, we need to develop uh, some more uh, screens or windows or view controllers, some views. Uh, and typically what happens when you uh, launch uh, an iOS application is there is a launch screen, which is basically a splash screen. And what we want to do is we want to have a splash screen that says, hey, welcome to our app. Um, and then if we're not auto logging in, we want to display the login view controller. And uh, if we've auto logged in, then uh, we just want to go to what we'll call the home view controller. And that'll be like where our app is basically situated. So we can right click here and zoom this down to 50% so we can see more available space. And we'll create a new view controller, which we'll place at the top. And this arrow is what is the initial view controller when the app starts. We're gonna move that arrow just by clicking and dragging on it and move us over here. So the first new file is gonna be a Coca Touch class just to make life a little bit easier. It's gonna be a view controller and we're gonna call it launching view controller. And we'll create that in our view controllers folder. And we will create another file in our view controller. Again, it's a Coca Touch class. It's a view controller and we'll call it home view controller. Make sure it says language is Swift. It's in our view controllers and we'll create that. So that things are easy, we will place everything in alphabetical order so we can find them in the future. And then go back to our main storyboard and on the launching view controller where it's got the class, pretty sure that's the place. We want to put no we don't. Give me my sideboard. Click on the view controller. Now there's our class. Launching view controller. If you weren't sure what was happening there. Then it was selecting the view. And as you can see, it looks very similar. It's called custom class, it's called class, it's called module. You go click on the view controller. It's got class module. This is what I want to show you. Is the initial view controller. You can give it a title. And in our launching view controller, we're just gonna put a giant label which we're going to give some constraints. We're just going to constrain it to, whoops, the four corners of the view with a border of eight. We'll add those four constraints. Then we're going to center the text. Instead of labor, we're going to say launch screen. We'll make this bigger. launch screen, that looks good. And typically what you do is you do just like a graphic or something, um, a little copyright notice down the bottom, that kind of thing. Apple's actually got some human interface guidelines on what should and shouldn't be on your launch screen. Um, so you might wanna have a, a read of that. Um, it's basically an image branding exercise, um, that kind of uh, thing.
Okay, so now we want to create a home view controller. So again, we'll get our view controller. I'll make a bit of space. And this view controller, we actually want to have a navigation bar. So we'll go up to the editor and we'll go embed in navigation controller. And I'll get onto what a navigation controller is, but basically that gives us a menu at the top. Um, and we can have what's called a bar button item which we will place on the right hand side and instead of calling it item, we will call it log out. I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this. So we've got our launch screen. That's where we're going to go to. Initially, we're going to look at the user defaults and if it says we're default logging in, so we've saved the username and password, it's going to go straight to this view controller which we're now going to rename. View controller. Home view controller. And we'll call, and we're gonna use this story ID. We're gonna call it home VC for view controller. This navigation, we're going to call home NC for navigation controller. And this login, we're going to call login VC for view controller. So we've got our login view controller, our home view controller, and our launching view controller. And they're going to be pointing to these um, three view controller files. So what's happening on launch? Okay, so a launch view controller is basically going to display, it's going to wait, and then sometime into the future, it is going to either go to the login or it's going to go to the home view. Um, we don't need to worry about this memory warning. Now, uh, when you have a view controller, there's this overrided function view did load, and this is the kind of thing um, that you do additional things for setup. And there is another function called view did appear. And basically what that allows us to do is once the view is actually being displayed, uh, then we can do more things. And, and, and what we want to do here is we want to uh, just allow, let's say, a three second display of the screen so we can just see uh, that it's there. And we do that uh, with the following code. So we've created this function called view did appear. And what we're going to do is we're going to pause on the launch screen for three seconds before doing anything else. So we make this call to a queue, dispatch queue. We want to be on the main queue uh, and we're going to uh, asynchronously wait for uh, between now and three seconds. And then we're going to execute our defaults.shared.load user defaults. So there's a couple of things that you need to understand. Firstly, you can't do this on view did, view did load because um, the this is done before the view controller is actually being displayed and we actually want to see the display of the um, of the launch screen uh, prior to calling load user defaults because as we'll see shortly load user defaults is going to change which window we go to either the login screen or the home screen um, <clears throat> so very important that we actually show the launch screen and then on the view di did appear uh, method that's where we wait if you do it in here you'll get into an infinite loop and uh, you'll take ages like I did figuring out what went wrong. So we go back to our user defaults and what we need to do is we need to act on this auto login functionality. So if 
auto login is true, then we are going to show the home view controller. Else, we're not auto logging in, so we want to show the login view controller. And I'll spell it right. And the code we used to do this looks like this. So we want to deal with our main storyboard, and you might recall that uh, when we initially created this project, that there were two storyboards. There was a launch storyboard and a main storyboard. And what we've done is we've brought our launch screen uh, here and um, and removed the other, so we don't the other storyboard, so we don't need to worry about swapping between storyboards. So from the main storyboard, there is a view controller. And we want to instantiate that, that view controller. We want to create it in memory. And we use the identifier home NC for home, uh, the home view controller. We want to call the navigation controller. So we're using the NC because we want that bar button and that navigation bar in the top right hand corner. And then we get a copy of our launching view controller. And we're going to create this method send to first screen. And we're going to send it the home view controller. Uh, memory address. So let's create send to first screen. Which takes a parameter of the UI view controller. Okay, from our uh, app delegate, we're going to get the app delegate from the UI application shared delegate the app delegate window root view controller, we're going to set to be our screen. And then from where we currently are, which is the launching view controller, we're going to present that screen. And uh, let's have a look and make sure it's working. Okay, so the home screen is working. And we've got our logout button, which currently does nothing. So we'll go to our, back to our storyboard and assistant editor. And where our button is there for the home view controller, we will create an outlet. It's going to be, in fact, an action. And it's going to be of a UA, UI bar button item. And we're going to call it logout action. Go back to our main editor. So what is our login action going to do? Well, it's going to send us back to the login screen. And we run the following code, which is similar to the one stuff we had before. We get our storyboard. We get a copy of the login view controller from uh, the, main view, uh, the main storyboard. And we're using the identifier login VC. And then we present the login view controller. If we run that. We get our launch screen, we wait three seconds, we get our home screen, we click on log out, and it's taking us back to our login screen. However, it is not filling in these uh, this information for us, so let's look at that. We go to our login view controller, and here in view did load, we are checking the status of the uh, login button, but we need to set some defaults. So we just create a method called set default values. And what we're going to do is just set email text, text value, not test, text value equal to our defaults dot shared dot username set the password text dot text to our defaults dot shared dot password and finally the auto login switch dot is on we will set that to our defaults dot shared dot auto login. So we'll set these defaults and then we'll check whether or not this button needs to be created or not. Let's have a quick look. Launch screen, 
we're logged in, let's log out. So those defaults have been set. And I haven't set this button function, so let's look at the button. Move to main view. So let's create that function or method. Uh, move to the home controller, and we need to do that back here as well. Move to the home controller, so um, let's create the function or the method up here, function. Move to home controller. And following the procedures we used previously, we get the storyboard, we get the home navigation controller, and we, we show that. Let's see if it works. We've got our launch screen, and it's doing nothing. And the reason it's doing nothing is under our user defaults, we are not showing the login view controller. So we can copy and paste this code. Now we want to change this to login VC. We're still going from the main storyboard. We want to change this to login. And we want to change this to login. And we'll just see here that even though main storyboard is a constant, uh, we're able to recall it here because this constant only exists between these uh, enclosures. So um, if you're wondering how that can happen and why we're not getting an error, that's because main storyboard uh, only exists between here and here for this if statement and between here and here for this else, uh, else statement. Now let's run it and see if it works. Launch screen. We're not auto logged in. If we log in, it should take us to the home. If we log out, it should take us back to auto login or our login screen, I should say. If we decide to move to auto login and log in, that should be saved. If we log out, it was saved. And if we run it again, it should auto log us in. Launch screen. Auto logs us in, so the persistence is working. So we have completed a rudimentary login screen with navigation to the core of our application. In the final of this series, we will look at ways to allow login across multiple devices through the use of GameKit and CloudKit. If you have any questions about the tutorial, then please leave a comment below or hit me up on Twitter at Swift Almanac. Please subscribe to the channel, it's free and check out our website at www.swiftalmanac.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.